Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at and with Normandale Lutheran Church. We're delighted to be together to share our thanks and praise with God, to be reminded of God's grace and love in our lives every day. So many people to thank. All of our musicians who are here this morning to celebrate the ministry of David Clark across 37 years. And we weren't sure that we'd have this opportunity with this virus we've been contending with for 18 months now. But thanks be to God, we have a fully vaccinated choir prepared to sing to bring power and joy to our worship. Welcome. For those of you live streaming, we are delighted that you are with us. No matter where we are as we move together into God's word and God's love, we are God's people together. Our choir being vaccinated is a reminder to all of us that we encourage everyone, if you've yet to receive and are eligible, to gain that vaccine to further public health. We also wear masks still indoors so that we might be in solidarity with those who are unvaccinated, thinking especially of our children who are awaiting approval of a vaccine for them. 
Pray for our educators who are considering the fall. Pray for our medical workers still attending to the sick. Pray for us, our congregation, that we may be renewed in God's power and vitality. And so if you are tired of wearing a mask, join the club. <laughs> we are all tired. And yet, if wearing a mask allows us to be together, then thanks be to God for masks. Let's wear them joyfully. Put a smile on our face beneath them and sing together the glory of God. So the most recent CDC recommendation is that we continue to wear masks while we are indoors. Out of love for others, we will. Next Sunday, our worship is outdoors. You're free to be without a mask. So please note that. And for all of the heartfelt emotion of this day, it is even a farewell month for a number of our staff. As this Wednesday at the 6.30 outdoor worship, we will say goodbye to Maggie Jones, our director of youth ministry who's been with us for five years. Maggie is going on to a new vocation as a counselor and therapist for the young. And on Sunday, August 15th, we will say goodbye to John Ferguson, our extraordinary organist who has been a godsend to us in this season of our life. So please note those dates and offer your well wishes to these two dear friends in ministry with us. And now our worship begins in the quiet of our own hearts as we clear out all those voices of distraction that haunt us, as we shed our fear and live in the power of one another and God's Holy Spirit among us. You are here. We are here. And God shows up with abundant grace for us all. Welcome to worship, dear people of God.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. voices together in prayer as your body in the world O God we seek to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have called us mark us with grace empower us with your gifts that we may grow up into the full measure of your son Jesus Christ our Savior
A reading from Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one hope, uh, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive, and he gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ we must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of, of deceit and doctrine uh, of, of people's trickery and their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way unto him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament, with which it is equipped, as each part of a, of a working is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Going down is a little weird. Are you all right? Okay. A reminder that we will be sharing Holy Communion this morning as a congregation we practice an open communion. All are welcome to come and receive the body and blood of Christ. You will be directed by the ushers to come up the center aisle. It is our departure ritual from worship. So you will receive the bread here at the center from either side and then to the outside tables to receive the wine. And then you are free to depart and make your way out to the parking lot where we will have a time of celebration and thanks for David Clark. Please join us immediately out there following the worship. Dear friends in Christ, you have been saved by grace. And this is not your doing, but it is a gift for all people. And we gather as people of grace living out our salvation in the world. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours through Jesus Christ. Amen. I did not first meet David Clark. David, I can't see you, and it's troubling me. He's right. There you are. I need to know. I did not meet him 34 years ago in the sweet confines of a worship space where word and music would be knit together in the beauty that is our worship. No, I met David Clark on the basketball floor. There we were, among other church workers, living out our former dream, <laughs> snorting and sweating among each other, and I met David Clark as he was chasing me and I was chasing him up and down that floor. 
And in the light of Ephesians 4, we were not meeting each other in all humility and gentleness. In fact, I remember his defense being rather physical. And there seemed to be no consequence for his fouls. Because you were to call them yourself. But as he covered me, I'm sure he missed the memo. And so there, as we were sweating and snorting, we were making a friendship. And if David and I were to engage again in that similar activity 34 years later, there would certainly be a call to 911. <laughs> For this Sunday in the lectionary, we are grounded in our worship, in the letter to the Ephesians, a letter that is designed to remind the people of God what it means to be the body of Christ in the world. They saw themselves as two humanities. There were the Jewish people and there were the Gentiles, and ne'er the two shall meet. But into the letter of Ephesians, we hear of Christ who breaks down the dividing walls between us to make us one humanity. And so in today's point in the letter, we are exhorted to live out a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. So in the light of this letter, this grounding text in our worship today, I am inclined to preach not about David Clark, for that would risk his humility. Not for David, for that would challenge his integrity to the gospel. But today, I will preach from David. Meaning if David were standing here, rather than being up there where he's accustomed and at home, what might he want to say to you, the dear people of Normandale Lutheran Church, the community with whom he has walked in faith for 37 years? Oh, he's said it in all the music he's provided. He's said it all in his way with people. He has said it in all in the presence of God within him, the Spirit shared, and most of all, the love. But since I am a preacher, I will speak from David to you, using Ephesians 4 as the foundational word for today. Oh, what we have been through in the last 18 months, and oh, how important the reminder of what it means to be the body of Christ in the world. So who are we to be? How are we to give witness to the faith that we hold to a world that is crying out, to a world that is even walking away? How might we bring people together in a world fraught with division? Ephesians is addressing our questions. And I know from David's heart, he has responses. First of all, love beyond the boundaries of what you know. In the time of the writing of Ephesians, there indeed were walls up between people. And what the Ephesians are really asking is expand your love. Do not be afraid to love larger. Do not be afraid to love across division. Do not be afraid because Jesus is there breaking down the walls. I have learned from David 
to love beyond what we know. I've also learned that eccentricities in people are their gifts. <laughs> it's the quirks, the oddities, the unique character and being of each one you encounter that are the gifts. It is those eccentricities that remind us of God's grand diversity in creation, even with the singular species of humankind. David has reminded me often that we need characters in our lives. People that cha challenge the edges of our love and draw us further beyond. People with whom perhaps we meet for the first time and we can't even find our footing in their presence. But as God's people who see deep within others, we learn that those eccentricities are God's gifts. And thirdly, David reminds us of this. Welcome the lonely into the body of Christ. Make room in your heart for the lonely. Because the antidote to loneliness and the healing given is community. A place and a people who welcomes the broken within us to be openly shared and received to know that we are loved. So today, whether you are here for the very first time time, or you are watching online, or you've been here for most of your life, you are the body of Christ together, knit in the ligaments and tendons of Christ's love. And you have been broken open to welcome others. And so I summarize David's sermon to you. Love beyond the boundaries of what you know. The eccentricities in others are their gifts. Welcome the lonely into the body of Christ. David, you said these things. I have listened. You have lived them among us. And we give a mighty, mighty thanks to God for you. And finally, David would say, let the music preach the gospel. Let the people sing their praise. And tell the preachers to keep it short. <laughs> what? But before I do finish, Ferg has asked me to do my own little introduction to the hymn of the day. What was that? No, I made that up. <laughs> Maybe you came to me in my dreams last night, Ferg, and I heard you say. <laughs> I want to be like David Clark. I want to follow Jesus. Davis has taught us to love without bounds, to see in each other Jesus. In David, There is kindness and grace. All people are welcome and all rejoice. So sing now, dear people, the body of Christ. Shine in our hearts, dear Jesus. Thanks be to God. I love you, dear friend.
as a congregation called by God, as the body of Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit. We seek to do community and to do worship not with perfection, but we seek to do it with one another. And so, let us together, as a community of Christ gathered together, with all our eccentricities and difference, proclaim our welcoming statement using the words printed in our bulletins. We affirm that all people are created in the image of God, and as beloved children of God, all are worthy of God's love and grace. We welcome all people into full participation in the life and ministries of Normandale Lutheran Church. We celebrate that there are differences among us and believe that we can love one another, even though we may not think alike. We proclaim this statement of welcome to all who have known the pain of exclusion or discrimination in the church and society. Normandale Lutheran Church is committed to a ministry of reconciliation. We welcome and affirm our human family's diversity of sexual orientation, gender identity, race, ethnicity, age, faith history, socioeconomic status, physical and mental ability. We embrace this diversity as a gift from God and invite all into a faithful journey toward greater love, understanding, and reconciliation. We give thanks to each of you for your generosity, your generosity of spirit and prayer and of presence with one another, and indeed your financial contributions which make our ministry and life together possible. Today, you may guess, we give thanks especially for David Clark and for our music ministries that have enhanced our worship life at Normandale so much over all these years. If you would like to contribute to, to our ministries and to our life of worship and music together, you can do so by visiting normluth.org give or by leaving a, a contribution, a gift to the church in the offering plate on the way out the doors after we're uh, served communion. And now, dear friends, I would invite you to stand. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I would invite you to turn to one another and elbow bump and give a sign of peace. As a reminder, just looking ahead in the service here, we will be uh, celebrating communion and doing distribution as our exit right on the way out of, out of worship. So we'll, be, we'll start communion now, we'll sing together, do the benediction, and then do distribution. So for those of you who have not been here for a little while, this may feel a little, a little weird, but it's all right. Just fair warning. <laughs> Let us together remember this story. That on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
He gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
I believe David is on his way down here to serve communion. So you may not have seen it, David, but uh, we'll send you that video. <laughs> members, of, <laughs> members of your youth choir from 2002 through till now, uh, singing a benediction that you have taught many times. And so, David, may the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine on you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and gives you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And everybody, as you are ushered forward to receive communion, you will come forward and receive the bread and the wine, and you can put, your, uh, put the cup in one of the empty trays. As a reminder, all are welcome at the table. This is God's gift to give. This is Christ's gift, gift to give, not ours. And so, hear these words. The body of Christ are given for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Come, eat and drink. All are welcome. 